Hey, Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to the Actualization Zone. This is your weekly weather report for the week of March 27th, 2022. And I am your host. I'm so happy to be here with you. If you are here with me live, I'd love to say hello. So just uh, type your name in the comments and say hello. If I'm just reading over here, it says can't post comments to Facebook group. I guess that means me, but I think that I can see your comments if you are here live with me. And if you're watching the replay, let me know that in the comments as well. I conduct these weather reports every week to activate and align us with just the non-physical energies that are influencing us this week as sensitive, emotionally intelligent, spiritually intelligent people who are leading in tech and healthcare, medicine, the law, and entrepreneurship, we actually are quite sensitive to non-physical energies, whether we acknowledge it or not. Now, if you've been with me for a while now, you probably are getting used to or more used to acknowledging your intuitions to acknowledging and getting a sense of what's going on internally to you and not overriding your intuition with your intellect. I really have felt for a long time since way back in the day when I was first learning about intuition and then when I was studying the role of intuition and how people make decisions about careers that Albert Einstein once said that intuition is a sacred gift and our reason or logic is meant to be a companion. But we've created a culture that honors the companion, honors the servant, and has forgotten the gift. And my job is to bring intuition back into its rightful place, into its rightful place as your major guide, as my major guide, as we are creating this new world for ourselves and other people. That's why I'm doing this. And that's why I started the Actualization Zone as well. So I'm so happy you're here with us. And let's go ahead and dive in just to give some context on this. What I do when I'm checking in with the weather, I actually use some of my Oracle cards. I'm looking around here to see if I, oh, I did bring some in, hold on. <clears throat> this time I love Oracle cards. And the reason that I do is because one of my favorite psychologists, the, the man who really guided my own studies in psychology, even though he was long dead by the time I came along, was Carl Jung. And Carl Jung talked a lot about our collective unconscious and the archetypes that are present in the collective unconscious that we all have access to. Whether we choose or not to access those archetypes is another thing entirely, but we all have access to these archetypes. And the oracle cards that I use give me access to my unconscious, give me words and images that are in alignment with what's going on in the current circumstances, what's going on currently in my life, in the lives of my clients, and just generally in the world. So I never use these as something to predict what's going to happen, but more generally, that's why I like to call it a weather report, just to pick up, you know, like this, What's going on in the weather today? Is there wind? Is it sunny? What's going on? So that's the context for what we're doing today. And the Oracle cards that I used this week are Rebecca Campbell has some really beautiful Oracle cards called the Rose Oracle that just came out recently. I don't have any skin in the game on that. I just like it. I love the vibe of these. And I think that they're really helpful in terms of driving the conversation. So the information I'm going to share with you in just a second I actually pulled cards to help me understand, and then I'll put my own words and, and images to those as well for you. All right, so here we go. I took some notes yesterday when I was tuning into this. So I'm just gonna share with you what came through, and then we'll see what else comes through as well today. The major message for this week is this, embrace the change, embrace the change. Remember last week I said, the winds of change are swirling. And this is the week to start embracing change. Make peace with what is. If you're coming back to week after being on holiday with your kids, if you had a really great weekend with your family and now you're back at work, whatever it is, make peace with what is right now. There's always a silver lining in there when you do. 
But this week is really the energies and, and what's being encouraged is to focus on deep healing and transformation of your mind, body, and spirit. So the outer changes that you're seeking on the physical plane are first created inside of you. I know a lot of the people that I work with privately who are in my actualization programs will say things like, I really want to lose 30 pounds, or I really want to find my next job, or I really want to make the leap into entrepreneurship, whatever those goals are, whatever those dreams you have are. But we have to remember that whatever outer changes we're wanting to experience, we first have to do the inner work. It happens from the inside out, not from the outside in. And that's the encouragement, just to remember today that you're, what you're seeking on the physical plane gets created inwardly first. So you can use the energies of this work to start ushering in your new creations, whatever those creations are. This is a week to strike the match and to start really cultivating the fire, the hearth fires of your new creations. Write down your dreams. And I don't just mean the dreams that you have at night, but the dreams of your heart that keep coming forward, that keep bubbling up, that you keep putting on the back burner, or you keep ignoring, or you keep saying, one day, maybe later. Write those dreams down. Your dreams are visions from your future. Your dreams are visions from your future. And last week I had said in one of the posts that I made is that we have been under the illusion that we have plenty of time to focus on our dreams, to focus on our visions. And it's actually couldn't be further from the truth. There is a sense of urgency now, and there is a sense of timeliness, and that time is now. So write down those dreams and remember that those dreams are visions from your future. If you feel your energy starts lagging toward the end of the week, I want you to think about things that you can do and not just think about them, but actually do them. Something, do something to change your energy. Dance, drink more water, meditate, reconnect with your inner child. You know, that playful, fun loving, joyful, effusive part of you who used to spin in circles when she was a little girl or jump rope or dance. And if you've got little kids in your house, all the better. Reconnect with their inner children, which they're living their outer children in that way as well right now. So really spend some time shifting your energy, but please first be aware of that. If your energy is lagging, you have a responsibility to shift it. You don't have to just wait for it to change. You can actually not strong arm it and not white knuckle it, but just make the decision. I'm going to shift my energy. And you can do that through what I just talked about, the dance, drinking water, engaging your inner child doing, writing some poetry, writing a haiku or a limerick, like all those fun things that we used to do as kids. Do that to just shift your energy. The big message that comes through for this week, and this is ongoing, but this is something that has been showing up a lot in the readings that I've been doing for other people in my own readings as well. But the time that you could have put off your energetic well-being has passed. So when I talk about meditating, when I talk about tuning into your intuition, tapping into that divine connection, your eternal connection that you have with God, with the center of the heart of the new earth, when I talk about things like that, I don't mean like every once in a while. What my guides are saying very clearly is that we need to start treating our energetic hygiene like we treat our physical hygiene. You brush your teeth every single day. You wash your hands every single time you use the bathroom or handle food or pet your dog, hopefully. I'm not always entirely good at that. But you get the point. We have routines for our physical bodies already in place. And now we're being beyond encouraged I want, dare I say, admonished to start bringing our energetic and our spiritual hygiene into a routine for ourselves. So this isn't something that you do every once in a while, <clears throat> but instead it's something that you engage in every single day. So now it really is a time for you to curate your physical body. 
and to curate your energy so that you can be on the path of your peak performance. Your body has to be able to feel its best if you are to actualize those most deeply held dreams that we talked about earlier in today's weather report. And then here's the last thing that came through as I was tuning in for this week. Can you live in this question? Just this week, just live in the question. You don't have to know the answer. You don't have to figure it out. That's a gift of living in your intuition is that the intuition is largely unconscious. So it's working on the problem behind the scenes. So you don't have to put your brain on it. You don't have to put your intellect on this, but can you live in this question? If you knew you would be supported, if you knew you would be fully 100% spot on supported, what would you do? What would you do if you were fully supported? Because the truth of it is, when you are walking this path of actualization, you are supported by physical beings like me, by non-physical beings like your guides, your intuition, God, the universe, and it's a very different way of thinking about actualizing your goals, isn't it? The time of doing it all, all by yourself has passed. You're not meant to walk this leg of your journey by yourself. And there are angelic beings around you. There are ascended masters around you. There are teachers and guides and helpers and protectors all around you. But you have to be open to that first. So the way that we open that portal, the way that we open the door into that full on energetic support is just by living in the question. And I'll repeat it for you. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? And that's really an opportunity to go back into those dreams that I invited you to write down. Those most deeply held hopes and desires that you've had in your heart that have been put on the back burner, that you've been waiting for some time that's more convenient, or when you lose weight, or when the kids are done with school. And all of those things are just distractors and delayers because the time is now. So know this, you are fully supported. You have to become aware of that support and the way that you do that is by living in the question. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for this week. I will pop back into our group in the next couple of days and do a training or something fun for us as we continue to get the actualization going up and actualization zone up and running. And if you know anybody, if you've got some intuitive, intelligent friends in tech, in healthcare, in medicine, in spiritual entrepreneurship, wherever they are, Invite them to join us because it really is about the more the merrier. And it really is about being shoulder to shoulder with like-minded people as we create the new world for ourselves and for other people. Until next time, Dr. Robin McKay here.